The next thing I want to talk about is I.O. configuration. If you're ever going to be working with the PLC or with group inputs and outputs, you're going to need to understand this aspect. Now, uh, for the digital inputs right here, we can go to configure and see that the digital inputs are in rack 67 slot 1 and they start at point 25. Now rack 67 as I know from the manual is dealing with the field bus. You can find this in the handling tool setup and operations manual but uh, field bus is using rack 66 and 67 uh, depending on whether you're dealing with the master side or slave side. Now if you want to add extra digital inputs and outputs you can. It's not so hard. You just simply uh, determine how many more you want. 300. And we're going to add it to the same rack. Oh. 67, 1, 2, and the start point will be different. So 200 plus 25 will be 55. And from there, uh, we'd be able to add an extra 100 inputs. If this was on the slave side, it'd be rack 66. And we could probably start it at point 0.1. It all depends on what you need. Um, it's these can be mixed and matched in here for instance you may have some of your master ones then your slave uh, digital inputs and then some more master ones afterwards now I don't want to get too in depth with this but the main thing is is I need you to understand that this rack is dealing with the type of uh, hardware that you have installed there and that you're using there are some specialty ones that for some robot systems such as the safety signals you can actually monitor those as your inputs or outputs and if you want to add some this is how you do it it's, it's uh, pretty straightforward slot will almost always be one you don't really need to worry about that uh, but the rack is the main thing to pay attention to when you're dealing with the PLC side one will be uh, byte zero and then eight two no nine will be uh, byte uh, one and so on and so forth you do not start these at zero as you would in some PLCs it must start at a one alright so I'm going to actually delete this because I don't really want that in there one thing to note is since we know where these digital inputs are starting I'm actually going to show the outputs because we're going to use those real quick we are going to set up some group outputs now one thing to mention is we uh, had our one two three and four here for our little strobe lights what we're going to do with this is since we know those are uh, digital output 1 through 4 we want to set it as a group output so before we start I want to actually name this group output uh, chasing light oh that doesn't do Ch hang on forgot I have to actually hit the keyboard chasing lights So we now have a name for this. Now I'm going to go to configure and for this group output we want rack 67 slot 1 start point at 25 because digital output 1 starts at 25 so that's digital output 2 is 26 then 3 is 27 4 is 28 so we just uh, need to tell it how many points there are there are four points so what this will do it starts here 
and the four visual outputs right there are included in this group output. So once we've actually finished this, we're going to have to cycle the power to the PLC or else it's not really going to save this. Notice they're still start out, meaning there's nothing really in use there yet. So to cycle the power, first we have to turn the teach pendant on. Next page, cycle power. This will cycle the power, are you sure? Yes. Okay, great. Now that the robot has finished cycling its power, we can see that this group output here has a value. It is now in use. So what we can do with this is we can use this group output to control these digital outputs there, or this can uh, be translated to the group output right here. So for instance, we're going to be right there and put in a value of 15 which is the binary value to turn on all of these because that would be a value of 1, 2, 4, and 8. So you sum up the ones that you want on, which ends up being 15 if we want to add them all on, and it'll turn them all on just like that. Now this can also be done the opposite way. Okay. Shouldn't have to turn that on. Oh, I'm holding shift. That's why. So when you turn this off, the group output right there is updated. So these go both ways right here. Now, since we've done this, it'll make some code a lot easier. As you remember in the, let's see, where was this? As you remember in the, Alt program right here. We use digital outputs to control all this stuff. We can now do this in a much simpler way. We can delete all this and instead say group output one is equal to zero. I'm going to insert a line to keep that spacing there and that was all that was needed and it can be a lot simpler this way so now we can say group output one is equal to one and we don't even have to turn it off and then uh, turn the next one on like this we can actually do this in one step so we're going to delete two of these lines real quick and go to IO, say group output one is equal to two. Group output one. One. Oh, accidentally turned off the teach pen over the keyboard. One is equal to four. And we'll delete those two lines. And right here. Group output one is equal to eight. All right, so that drastically simplified the code, makes it a lot easier to follow for this, and just saves us some lines. What we can also do is in our home IO code, we can change this up. So I'll delete three of those and change this last one to group output one is equal to zero. And just like that, we've saved a lot of code and it makes it a lot easier to do this type of stuff. This also is very helpful for checking aspects of this. For instance, if we had uh, some digital inputs which would give a variety of alarms. We could check to see if uh, any of them were on if we set them all to a group input. By just seeing 
is this group input equal to zero? If not, then we have an alarm. We might want to do something about that. Or if uh, you have a bunch of digital outputs that are alarms, and you can set them all into one group, and then when the PLC sends the reset command in a program, you can just set that group output to zero. And that way, it clears all the digital outputs that are on. Those are some of the uses for this. It can also be used to control vacuums. If we had four vacuums right here, and the uh, vacuums we turned on would vary from program to program, rather than uh, going through every program and changing uh, like which digital outputs go on, we can always just have it say, group output two for vacuums will turn on all four or just two as needed in the program.